Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. Today is mail call. More mail call. There's going to be heaps of mail calls. I've already done a couple. There's more to come. Um, there was a sale on at AliExpress and I got a bunch of stuff. So uh, I'm waiting for that to arrive. I got this big bag full of stuff today from China. Thank you AliExpress. We'll be having a look at that soon. Um, I also got this which is from the local hardware store. It's just a couple of RCD devices. We'll have a look at those as well. Um, and I've got this uh, package here from Amazon, which uh, I'm not even sure what's in there. I did get some books, so it could be a book or, uh, or something else. We'll find out. Now, the other day I was telling you that the magazines that I, I read are Silicon Chip Magazine, and uh, which is an electronics magazine, an Australian electronics magazine, I should say. But uh, it's, it's got an international following. So that's Silicon Chip. I read that magazine. I also read Make Magazine from San Francisco or somewhere in, yeah, in, in California. Um, that's good fun, Make Magazine. So uh, I read that. And I did say that was the only two magazines I, um, I uh, subscribe to. And that's kind of true. They're the only two magazines that I pay for. But I get this magazine as well. And it's for free. It's basically advertising from... Uh, Element 14, which, which are um, uh, an electronics wholesale uh, distributor in uh, in Australia. So they send out their Connect magazine, and I always enjoy having a bit of a flip through it. It's basically an ad for their products, but it's it's a uh, uh, it's good just flipping through and just seeing what's what what's available and what the prices are, and uh, basically uh, helps you uh, sort of keep your finger on the pulse of the industry just to see what's. Um, you know what 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 they think is relevant um, and interesting. Um, so uh, yeah, I do enjoy flicking through Connect Magazine, and it's an easy read. It's it's not very big. It's just a couple of pages. I don't know if it'll tell you how many pages. Thirty five pages by the looks of it. So uh, anyway, yes, today is mail call. Um, there'll be some other stuff coming up soon. I, I've got to do the debugging uh, video for the. Um, Symbol Keyboard, which was the first JCAR Mini project. I've really got to get on with some more of the JCAR Mini projects, so I've got more of those to do. Of course, the um, Sensor Robot 20, I'm still working my way through that. Um, and I've got old book teardowns to do. I want to do the inaugural maths homework, so that's coming up. So there's no end of things to do. Uh, that'll all be coming up over the next couple of weeks. Um, so, you know, if you're interested, don't forget to hit subscribe. Anyway, let's jump over to the bench and see what came in the mail. Here we are on the bench. This is my uh, power breakout box that I made recently. I'm going to be using that soon to demo my new Fluke meter. So, uh, that's coming up soon. Um, oh, yes, this is the Connect magazine that I was just talking about. So, this is the um, uh, issue 46, uh, July to September 2024. Uh, July, August, September. So that's over three months. Obviously, it comes out quarterly. Cool. Now let's uh, let's have a look in here. Let's see what we got. Oh no! Huh. I've cut the paperwork in half. Oh well. I might just put these resistors away while I think of it. I uh, I do like to make a mess, don't I? <sighs> so, these are my books from our mate, Forrest M. Mims. Check him out. That's him there on the back, our mate Mims. So these are timer, op amp, and optoelectronic circuits. This is electronic sensor circuits. And this is electronic formulas, symbols, and circuits. So this is uh, one, two, and four. So I seem to be missing volume two. I wonder if I've ordered it. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yes, and in the best for forest mems tradition, it's all written with a pen. Good stuff, Forrest. So we might uh, we might do an old book tear down of these 
sometime in the future. But there's three books from Forrest M. Mims. Wonderful. And uh, here's his Getting Started in Electronics. A complete course in 128 pages. Check it out. Good work, Forrest. Uh, copyright 1983 and then again in the year 2000. So this has been recently, recently updated in the last 24 years. So uh, there we go. This book is for the entertainment and edification of its readers. Readers. Awesome. Wow. He's such a creative dude, isn't he? Anyway, it's an, it's another couple of books for me. Now these, as I mentioned, are um, safety devices. I got them from Bunnings. Um, Bunnings is like a franchise hardware store here um, in Australia. And these were about 30, 30 Aussie bucks. Probably about around about 20 US dollars. I got three of them. They're, uh, they're called RCD. You see here, it's the RCD safety switch, which is RCD stands for um, uh, return current device. Is that right? Return current? Should say here. Uh, residual. Residual current device. So basically it checks if you're in the process of electrocuting yourself and if that's happening it'll throw the, the safety switch and it'll stop electrocuting you. Um, so I've got these um, going uh, in uh, uh, behind some of the, the um, PowerPoints in the lab here. Two of them are going to go over there and one of them is going to go over there. Um, and I'm actually waiting for uh, a power board, a 10-way power board to arrive as well to fix up some of the wiring. Anyway, that's what these are. Residual current devices from the local hardware store. I paid about 100 Aussie bucks for the three of them. Um, so that was good. And now everything else is from China. Ah uh, yes, I um I did get some some kits, um, and this is uh, one of the kits. This is a uh, a game, a retro game. So it's a, it's like a Game Boy. <laughs> so we, we'll we'll put that together on the channel one day. That'll be a fun project to do. <clears throat> ah boy. Actually, just give me a minute, I'll be back. I'm back. Um, just let me get my coffee here. So I thought we should ha actually have a closer look at this. This is um, DIY, a DIY game kit, retro classic electronic soldering welding training set, snake plane racing with acrylic case, mini game, console, color kit. So basically, it's like a do-it-yourself Game Boy. Who remembers the Game Boy? Might be showing my age there. Uh, Game Boy is old, old, old. Now, I've got some uh, some containers for putting our various kits in because there will be a number of kits today. That's what we'll be having a look at. So um, I'm just going to keep the, the labels handy in the box so uh, um, these kits I intend to do them on the show we'll do them when they come up that'll keep us busy for the rest of the year I reckon so here's the acrylic case it's got some bolts and some standoffs very good fits in there which is perfect and uh, here is our 
battered bag. Shall we look at the pieces? I don't think it would hurt us to look at the pieces. Why not? Let's pop this open up this end. Let's get the scissors there to finish that off. There we go. Now, let's just tip everything in here, huh? Now, I'm not super sure if that... Uh, yeah, why not? We'll, we'll keep that bit of paperwork in the thing as well. This is the HU001 Pixel Game Boy. So, uh, yeah, that sounds like good fun, doesn't it? So, there's our uh, power for uh, four double A's. A couple of uh, switches, buttons, a few uh, loose resistors and such. So, it's going to be powered via... Uh, USB type A um, and here we go there we go we've got our LED matrix matrices and uh, and that looks like the brain of it there some sort of microcontroller and uh, there's the circuit board some instructions looks like good fun doesn't it so yes looking forward to that one I think it fits it fits in the uh, in the container here can I put a lid on that Yes, all right, well there we go, that's our first one down. So let's see what's next. Ah uh, yes, so these are just uh, 15 lots of uh, 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 electrolytic capacitors. They were cheap, so I got them. Uh, just good, good, good fodder for the um, component drawers. Um, I don't know. I don't know if they're any good or if they're terrible. Um, who knows? You know. Um, but uh, yes, there we go. A O Q D Q D Q D. That was not an English person who came up with that name. Now, uh, oh, their case is a little bit broken there, but that's okay. I'm going to pop all these things out of their cases anyway, but I won't do that here with you now. I'll do that by myself later on. Now, what's on here? All right, well, this looks like 5-in-1 CO2 meter. So this is an air quality um, uh, measuring thing. So uh, let's uh, pop it out of its box and see what we're dealing with. Now I want to keep the uh, label again, so we'll try to keep that in one piece. There we go. Now, uh, just going to chop these bits off. So, it's all in Chinese. Except for this bit, that, that was in English. Alright. Carbon dioxide detector. <sighs> ah, I was expecting a kit, but this is just a... Uh, That's just a whole thing, isn't it? So, let's keep digging. What have we got here? Looks like a whole thing. So this is just a uh, carbon dioxide detector. Model M8, charging type C, voltage five volts. Fascinating. Well, here's a Type A to Type C cable, which we can use for uh, powering it. I've got some power up the back here, so let's put that in there. Let's power this guy up, shall we? There we go. Power in, and 
it says it's charging the battery. Presumably there's a battery in there if it's giving a battery charging indication. Let's have a look at the manual while that thinks about if it needs to charge or not. So this is the carbon dioxide detector, 5N1, instruction manual. Air quality detector, CO2 in parts per million, C uh, HCHO in milligrams per cube meter, and TVOC. I think that's volatile or something. Volatile organic compounds or something. I'm not sure. Anyway, it looks like this has got a few... Uh, <sighs> Fascinating. This is uh, this is in English on this side, and in Chinese on this side. Good work, China. So, um, thank you for choosing our products. The development of our products, both in terms of functionality and design, is completed in accordance with the requirements of high quality. We are confident that you will be pleased to purchase a new product from our company. Main operating modes of the instrument. Determine the concentration of CO2 in the ambient air. Measure the room temperature and humidity. When the air CO2, carbon dioxide, exceeds the standard, the instrument will alarm prompts. Understanding ambient air carbon dioxide levels, temperature and humidity data, facilitating timely measures to reduce carbon dioxide levels to safe levels, and adjust the humidity and temperature of the room to a comfortable level. This device will help to determine the need to install additional ventilation and measures to moisturize the air in the room in order to create conditions conducive to ensuring a safe and comfortable environment. According to many studies, the environment is good for health, prompts clear think promotes clear thinking, better decision making, and prevents respiratory diseases. There you go. So let's press the power button and see what happens, huh? Should we take the screen protector off? Maybe. Yeah, let's take the screen protector off. Oh, didn't like that. Oh, wasn't expecting that. I uh, I went to pull the screen protector off and uh, the thing came off, but the thing didn't come off. I'm not sure if I should uh, scratch away at that or not. I'm not sure. What do we do? Is that, uh, that going to come off? I don't know. Usually this little tab, you just pull it and the whole... Oh, there we go. It's stuck back on. There we go. So uh, we got the screen protector off now. So there's the CO2 in parts per million. Uh, I have to say though, the uh, the screen is really difficult to read, isn't it? Like it doesn't have a good, uh, I don't know how to operate this thing. Yeah, look, I want to like it, but uh, I can't because Yeah, this is no good. I think maybe it's not getting enough power. Seems to be running on batteries now. Yeah, it's weird. Like, you can only see it if you look at it at exactly the right angle. Otherwise, it uh, it's too difficult to read. Might just try a different power slot up the back here. There we go. Well, let's just keep that up the back there and we'll take another look at it later on. Um, and perhaps I should read the... Uh... Read the instructions a bit more closely. But let's keep on keeping on with our... Um with our uh, mail call. 
Oh yeah, there we go. So this is a 5-in-1 meter. It's not a kit at all. I don't know why I thought it was a kit. What's this? Oh, I forgot to show you this earlier. Yeah, right. Well, let's do that. So this is uh, a radio. It's a radio kit. 88 to 108 megahertz FM radio transmitter and receiver module. Ah, is that right? I'm not sure. Is this a transmitter and a receiver? It says it is. Do we believe it? I don't know if we believe it. Let's pop it out of its box. Bag, I should say. Put some uh, components in there. Let's chop the label off. Well, this is one of those circuits that's just wholly implemented on a um, on a microcontroller. That's it. There, we'll have to have a look at that when we when we come to do this project. Um, we'll have a close look and see if we can figure out what what that uh, what that integrated circuit is. But uh, yeah, fascinating. It says that it's a radio transmitter and receiver. It doesn't seem to have a microphone phone. So yeah, no idea how this works. Anyway, maybe we'll be able to figure it out. So uh, it's one for, for the future. Now, what about this one? This looks like just some components to me. Thirty sets of oh, potentiometer. There we go. Oh, it looks like. Uh... Okay, so this is more capacitors, and then a whole swag of potentiometers. And hopefully they're decent um, potentiometers. I think I've got some I didn't have before being uh, like 50K and, and 500K. Anyway, we'll know in a second. All right. So there's our uh, capacitors. Very good. Just more for the drawers. They were on sale, so I got them. And uh, these are potentiometers, I believe. So let's just pop that open. <clears throat> yep. Yep, just uh, potentiometers. And they come with uh, uh, the little, um, the, the knobs as well. So you can install them. Uh, so 1K, 2K, 5K, 10K, 20K, 50K, 100K. 250k, 500k, one meg, uh, and it's three sets of everything. Three sets of everything. Wonderful. So those are good to have. <coughs> I'll uh, let's flip the little sign around. Why not? Great. And it's in this bag. That's pretty boring. It's just some DuPont cables. So, uh, yeah, I buy these every time I see them if they're on special. I've got uh, I've got heaps of them. It's, looks like it's a um, it's a set of three by the looks of it. So we've got uh, 
female to female, male to female, male to male. Easy peasy. So I'll file them later on. Now what's in uh, I need that bag? What's in this bag? This is a box. Open the box. Alright, what do we got in the box? We got USB power. It's a keyboard. <laughs> yes. It's it's like it's I don't know if it's programmable. <laughs> oh no, it fell apart. Maybe it needs to be uh I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the what the key presses actually send, but it's a, it's a um, it's a it's a USB keyboard, I believe. I wonder if we could test it out. I suppose we could. Yeah, interesting. And this is just a rotary device. I don't know if it comes across as like volume control on a keyboard or something. I don't know. Anyway, that's something to check out in future. So we can just put that in here for now. Now, was there any... Uh, there wasn't really. That was it. That was the whole thing. Alright, very good. Now... This says uh, uh, four-digit digital DIY. Oh, this is a clock. It's a digital clock. Let's just have a look at this. Now I'm going to just chop this open, and we'll keep our little label. some sort of a, a casing and there we go so it's a kit um, just put it in here so uh, that and that and these are the bits and pieces you can see in there just components and such um, there's probably some LED displays seven segment LED displays not seeing those jump out at me shall we have a, have a look are they in here? They're not. That's just a case. And this is uh, all of the components and such. <clears throat> so, you can see the space for the things to be on. Maybe you have to bring them yourself, I don't know. Oh, there it is there. So that's the, uh, the seven segment display. Very good. All right, Ripper. So uh, it's it's just a simple clock, um, and uh, we can put that together someday just for fun. Very good. And on we go. What's in here? This is another uh, radio project. So, to say it's pretty cool radio if it's got a, um, 
uh, 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 LCD, or not LCD, but a seven segment uh, display. I wonder if that'll show you the frequency that it's tuned to. That'd be very digital for a radio. So yes, this is just another radio project. I did actually manage to secure a bunch of kits. So they're, uh, they're, they're good fodder for the show, aren't they? I like putting the kits together, it's fun. You know, I'm planning to do more J-Car kits actually in the future. <sighs> kits, 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 kits. All right. And on we go. What's in here? This is, uh, oh, these are voltage regulators. I think they're surface mount too. We'll check them out. Hang on. Yep, it's a it's a roll of um, fifty uh, integrated uh, SMD uh, voltage regulators. So uh, three point three volts they deliver. I think. Excuse me for a minute. I'll be back in a sec. I'm back. So I. Uh, I just got myself this tray. That's where we'll be keeping these uh, um, voltage regulators. They're uh, they're three point three volt regulators. Uh, I probably have more call for five volt stuff, um, but I got I got a, I got a reel of those now. They're AMS one 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 sevens, I believe. <clears throat> so that's all well and good. What's next? This looks like another kit. This is DC regulated power supply kit. Cool. So this is a power supply kit. We'll uh, pop him out of his box. Here we go. It's pretty good to me. So uh, it's a reasonable looking circuit board. Perfectly solid. There we go. So this is just a, uh, I suppose it's a switching uh, power supply. Uh, DC regulated power supply, continuously adjustable, current limited, uh, protection, voltage regulator, uh, 0 to 30 volts. Alright. So yeah, obviously I got a bunch of kits, didn't I? So this is a, a voltage regulator kit. What's in here? <clears throat> oh wow. It's wire. Heaps of wire. All right, well, let's see if it's all the same gauge. This is 26, and this is 26, and this 26, and this is 26. 26, 26, and 26. So technically, as far as I can tell, it's all uh, 26 AWG. American Wire Gauge, I think AWG stands for. So... Might as well file this. Oh, no, I'll file it later. You don't want to see me file this, do you? We're going to file this together. I'll do it later. So, uh, 26 gauge wire. I've got a spare drawer. I cleared out a drawer to house it, so I've got a drawer that it can go in. Look at this. This is festive. AliExpress branded um, bag. So, I haven't seen that before. They're uh, pimping a, or promoting a 
a, a, a conference, Euro 2024 in Germany. There you go. Wonder if I've got any viewers from Germany. Maybe. It's a big world out there. What are these? We'll know in a minute. These are oh, LCD display modules. I wonder if they're all the same. I think they are. Okay, cool. I wonder if they'll fit in one of these drawers. They might. I want to fit three of them in there. Might only be able to fit one per thing. Let's have a look. It's not going to fit at all. All right. Well, I'm just going to cut off the uh, little thing. All right. Now, I just want to confirm that they're uh, actually all the same. Yeah, I believe they're the same. Yeah, three are the same. Just, uh, Cut this bit off here. So, where are we going to keep these things? I guess we'll just, um, we'll give them a a plastic uh, drawer. Here's a plastic drawer for them, so we can put their uh, paperwork in the back there, and then these will fit in here. One, two, three. And on we go. This looks rather large. I wonder what's in here. Fairly well packaged. So what do we got? Looks like another power supply, doesn't it? I wonder what it is. What are we dealing with? Some sort of a kit. Oh, it's got uh, some sort of EU power on it, I think, there. I'm not an expert on my uh, international power adapters, I just don't know much about them. So, let's empty this guy into here. Have a look at our instructions. <sighs> Gee whiz. So, uh, try and keep all the bits in there. Okay. If we can get That in there, Oop, that in there, great big honking transformer, and then some power. Look at that, <laughs> that's an accident waiting to happen, isn't it? Gee whiz. Anyway, 
Uh, it's a bit of cardboard. I don't know what that's doing there. Uh, let's have a look and see what this is. Oops, it's all Chinese on that side. LM. Oh, it's an amplifier. What do you reckon? Yeah, it looks like an amplifier. Oh, there we go. So there's some English uh, on this side. Chinese on this side. Uh, yeah, okay. Well. Um, yep, this is, this is a project for another day. I'm pretty sure it's an amplifier. That's cool. So, uh, let's bundle that up in the line of our kits. And let's keep on keeping on. What else have we got in this bag here? This is from Germany. Mini keyboard. Fascinating. <laughs> there we go. It's just one to eight. It's digits one to eight. Cool. What are we going to do about this one? It's got a little red power button as well. USB-C connectivity up the back here. So, okay. Well, uh, we'll put that in there. Have a look at that at some point. Um, and we're going to want to collapse down the uh, thing. We'll get that fitting in there. It's a shame they put all the stuff over the, uh, the box. So uh, I've got my uh, electric scissors here. So these might help. Well. These things are great, by the way. Check them out if you're interested. I'll put a link in the show notes for you. So, so let's go in there. It's fairly good to me. So we'll have a play with that at some point. We're nearly at the end of our bag. So what have we got here? All right, another sort of kit. Storm, steam, uh, I don't know what, oh, steam, steam. Wow, this has got motors and gears and such in it. I don't remember this at all. <sighs> For kids 14 years and older, I'm a I'm a fourteen year old old older than fourteen year old kid. 
Oh, this is a hand crank generator. Okay, cool. So it's basically a electric motor in reverse. Um, and it's just for uh, teaching you how you can generate electricity. So that's cool. I'll uh, chop off the bits and pieces. So, yeah, there it is. Uh, some gears and such. Looks like good fun. Almost there. Let's see what's in here. <sighs> this is a tone board. Uh, any 5532 tone board preamp with treble bass volume adjustment. So it's a, it's an audio amplifier or a preamp, they say. And it's got uh, bass and treble and such. Uh, give me a tick, I'll be back. I'm back. Got myself a fresh coffee. So uh, we nearly finished this bag. We're almost done. Uh, this one, as I said, it's a some sort of audio preamp. Uh, so that's cool. Let's pop this open. So as you can see, uh, I, I got a whole uh, bunch of, uh, of, of, of electronics kits. Oh, this isn't even a kit, is it? It's pretty much done. So uh, I want to get myself some actual speakers. Uh, audio speakers and just have them on the thing. I'll probably just get some 8 ohm cheapo things like remember the old speakers that used to come with your sound blaster card on your computer some computer speakers but not USB ones or Bluetooth ones just ones that run off a audio jack alright now oh, I seem to have run out of lids uh, that doesn't matter. So are we almost there? Almost there. <sighs> this was just a little bit more of the wire that we had earlier. So, uh, does it say? Yeah, 26. That's good. And these were just a bunch of um, 555 uh, integrated circuits. There we go. It says there's 50 of them. That's amazing. It doesn't look like 50, does it? I guess if you count them. So, uh, Chop off the label. Might as well keep these in this drawer I got down earlier. Pop that out. Uh, okay, so I'll uh, just quickly make a label for that. Uh, so what are we going to call these? NE555P. 
is that right? Any 555P, that's right. Have you seen my label maker? It's pretty neat. Just uh, prints out a label. And you always have to chop this little bit here off with a pair of scissors. And then you're good to go. So uh, that box won't fit. So we'll, we'll uh, I'll live without the box. It's got a bit of tape here to get off. There it is. Now, is that everything? Just about. Let's see if we can pop that guy out. Yep. So we've got a um, little box left over. It's not a bad thing to have. Uh, and I'll just label these. So that just goes on the front there. So that's the uh, the label there, and these can just live up here. <sighs> Might as well have one last look at our um, air quality meter. If you get the angle right, it's easy to read. But if you don't get the angle right, no, this is rubbish. The uh, the um, display is all like it says the temperature the temperature doesn't oh there we go if you squeeze it really hard no no this is rubbish unfortunately it just doesn't, isn't working out It says the temperature is, can you see that temperature there? It's not in, uh, the digits aren't all there. Oh, there you go. If you press it really hard. Yeah, I don't understand this at all. This, uh, I have to say, this is certainly my least favorite bit of kit. You can't read what it says. It's, can you see? How disappointing. Anyway, I won't, I won't carry on about this. This is just, uh, this was a dud buy. The, the problem down the bottom there. So, uh, yeah, that's disappointing. Not sure what to say about that. Oh, there it says now the temperature is minus one degree Celsius. That can't be right. It must be trying to say 31 or 21. I don't know. But it's, uh, it's not working. Anyway, we won't waste our time uh, anymore on that. So, uh, yeah, that's it. That's a box empty. So, uh, just hang on a sec. Well, I was a little bit discombobulated there by that bit of uh, electronics beeping at me. Um, so, yes, obviously, uh, today was very much a uh, kit day. I got uh, a whole swag, a whole bunch of kits. There's uh, four kits there. And then there's uh, four more kits here. Uh, so that's eight kits to play with in future. Um, the least favorite bit of equipment obviously was that air quality sensor because its readouts were rubbish. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't really care that much for radio circuits. So those FM transmitter receiver things, yeah, whatever. Um, audio I'm a bit more interested in. So the preamp there, I'm interested in checking that out. Um, the the voltage uh, regulator that's fun um, that that little hand generator thing that's cool and I might be able to um, show that to my niece and nephew and, and and teach them a thing or two about how to generate electricity so yeah the kits were probably the main haul out of this obviously I got some components and such these are my 3.3 volt uh, voltage regulators I got a whole swag of um, uh, 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 potentiometers here um, 
I got two uh, boxes of capacitors, so that's good. And uh, more DuPont cables. I never miss an opportunity to stock up on some DuPont cables because I do use them all the time. Uh, and these are, might be my favorite bit of equipment from the thing and I'll have to figure out how to interface them. Oh, they've been damaged. That's a disappointing. Uh, but it looks like it's not permanent damage. Just some bent, uh, some bent um, pins here. Anyway, they'll bend back into place. So I've got three of these uh, LCD displays. Look forward to figuring out how they work. Um, and that's pretty much everything, isn't it? I got a couple of these um, uh, residual current device uh, safety switches, which we looked at earlier. I'm pretty happy to have these. Um, and that's basically everything. I'll have to um, go and have a look at uh, about the uh, the Forest and Mims uh, books that I got because I don't seem to have volume two. I've got volume one. Volume 3, Volume 4, and then this completely other thing. Um, but I don't have Volume 2, so I uh, might have to investigate that, because who doesn't want to have the full set, right? You've got to have the full set, if you can, anyway. So, um, yes, that's everything. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for watching, and please remember to hit like and subscribe.